Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. From this video, we are going to start a new chapter, Design of Compression Members. In this chapter, we will cover Introduction to Compression Members, Concept of Residual Stresses, Concept of Side Sway, Snug Tight and Tension Bolts, Failure Modes of Compression Members, Slenderness Ratio and Effective Length Factor, Modified Slenderness Ratio for Built-up Sections, Types of Column Based on global buckling and their strength types of columns based on the local buckling then desi design procedure for the compression members and then we will solve some examples few examples for design of compression members and at the last we will cover the topic of design of lacing and tie plates in this video we will cover the introduction to compression members so first of all what is a compression member so when a load tends to squeeze or shorten a member, the stress produced are said to be compressive in nature and the member is termed as a compression member. So if we apply the load in such a way that it try to shorten the member, its length is reduced. In that case, the member is termed as a compression member. So in structures, the examples of compression members are strut, means short columns columns or long columns, bracing members, top cord of trusses, compression flanges of beams and members that are subjected to simultaneous bending as well as compressive loads. So here we have columns, these are the bracing which can be in compression. So here the top cord and these members are in compression. Similarly in this beam, the top flange will be in compression. So these are the different members which can be under compressive load or which may can be a uh, compressive members in steel structures. So next is difference between compression and tension members. So there are two significant difference. The first difference is in case of tensile loads or the tension member, tensile loads tend to hold a member straight. So even if a member is not a straight but when we apply the load on that member so it will straighten, so it will become a straight member. So this is the case of tension members. But in case of compression member, even if a member is straight, but if we apply the load, a compressive load, so it will bend. So it will bend it in a direction perpendicular to the load. So either in this shape or like this. So the applied load, the applied compressive load will try to bend the member in a transverse direction perpendicular to the line of applied loads. So this is the first difference between tension member and compression members. Okay, the second is the presence of reverse or bolt hole in tension member reduces the area. So in case of tension members, when we find out the capacity of a tension member so we consider the net area at the connection so we subtract the area of the holes even the bolts are present in these holes but we subtract the area of these holes to calculate the net area and the capacity is considered based on the net area of the section but in case of compression members we consider that the bolts or rivers fill these holes and instead of net area, we consider the grass area at the connection to calculate the capacity of the member. So this is the second difference between compression member and tension members. Okay, next is the types of columns with respect to loading. So there are two types of columns based on the type of loading. The first one is concentrically loaded columns and the second one is eccentrically loaded columns. So in case of concentrically loaded column, load is distributed uniformly over the entire cross section with the center of gravity of the loads coinciding with the center of gravity or centroid of the column. So here the load is considered acting at the centroid of the column. So this is the ideal case that the load is acting at the centroid of the column. So if the load is acting at the centroid, so we can call it as a concentrically loaded column. So it is the ideal type of load 
on a column is a concentric load and the member subjected to this type of load is termed as a concentrically loaded column so there is a possibility that the interior column of a building may be a concentrically loaded column because in that case the area supported by this column is same on all four sides in most of the cases and the bracing elements they can be a concentrically loaded column because we can design the connection in such a way that the load may act at the centroid of the section similarly the truss members can be a concentrically loaded column because in that case we have a pin connection so the load can be assumed to act at the centroid of the column so these are the ideal cases in which we can say that the column is a concentrically loaded column but in most of the cases the column is not a concentrically loaded column there is always some possibility of eccentricity of the load mean the load is acting away from the centroid next is eccentrically loaded column so if the center of gravity of the load does not coincide with the centroid of column so then it is termed as eccentric column so here this is the centroid but the load acting at a distance e from the centroid so this type of loading is termed as eccentric loading and such column is termed as a eccentric column and the distance from the centroid up to the point of action of the load or line of action of the load is termed as eccentricity so the axial loads as well as bending moment act on the column due to eccentricity of load so because of this eccentricity this distance between the load and the centroid of the column there exists a bending moment so this p time e will produce a bending moment m in the column so in that case the column is simultaneously subjected to axial load as well as bending moments so in practice majority of the columns are eccentrically loaded compression members so mostly the columns are eccentrically loaded columns the eccentricity may be small or large but the eccentricity exists or uh, we can say eccentricity always exists in the columns so let's discuss what are the sources of this eccentricity in compression members so the first are the main sources load transfer to the exterior column so it is sure that in case of exterior columns the column will be a eccentrically loaded column because the area supported by the column is on only one side so the centroid of the load will act somewhere over here and the centroid of the column is over here so there will be a large amount or large value of eccentricity in case of edge columns so the load transfer to the exterior column are generally having large eccentricity as the center of gravity of the load will usually fall well on the inner side of the column so the center of gravity of this load will be li will lie over here well on the inside of the column and there is a distance between the center of gravity of the load and the centroid of the column so this distance is e so because of this load and this eccentricity there will exist a bending moment equal to p into e so the other sources are initial crookedness so if the column have initial crookedness there is a a local bend in the column so in that case at this point the centroid of the column and the line of action of the load will not coincide for example it is like this so here this is the load so the line of action of load is passing over here and the centroid of the column is over here so at this point there will be eccentricity so because of this eccentricity from the line of action of the load and the centroid of the column so a bending moment will generate in the column and this column will be termed as eccentric column and the second source is eccentricity of load if the load is acting away from the centroid so this is a possibility mostly in case of brackets so here we have a column and here we have a bracket like this so in that case if a girder is resting on this bracket so definitely the line of action of load will be over here and the centroid of the column is over here so there will be a large amount of eccentricity so this eccentricity will generate bending moment in the column so the next source is application of simultaneous transverse load so this also produces the 
bending moment in the column and we can say that there exists the eccentricity so the next is out of plumbness so if the column is not a straight not vertical so here we the column is not vertical so the line of action of load and the centroid of column are away from each other at the bottom of the column so here exists uh, eccentricity e so this eccentricity e times the applied load p so that will generate a bending moment in the column so if the column is not a straight it is out of plumb so in that case again there exists eccentricity and this eccentricity will generate bending moment in the column so the out of straightness as well as this initial crookedness the code specify the maximum limit on that so ACI code AISC code of standard practice specifies acceptance upper limit on the out of plumbness and initial crookedness equal to length of member divided by 500 so the maximum permissible out of plumbness as well as the initial crookedness is equal to L over 500 so if this eccentricity is more than this value so in that case that column will not be acceptable so it means we need to reconstruct or refabricate that member okay next is section used for columns so we can use single angles double angles t channel w pipe square tubing and rectangular section so almost all structural shapes can be used for compression members we can also make built up section by using these structural shapes the built up sections are better for columns because the slenderness ratio in various direction may be controlled to get nearly equal values in all directions so we can make the built up section to equalize the slenderness ratio in both directions for example we have a channel section so in that case slenderness ratio about x axis will be large but slenderness ratio about y axis will be small so to make the slenderness ratio in both the direction equal what we can do we can make a built up section so in that case we can adjust the spacing between the sections as well as we can decide the shape of this built up section either this back to back channel or face to face channel to make the box section so in that way we can equalize the slenderness ratio in both the directions so slenderness ratio about y axis as well as about axis axis can be equalized so when the slenderness ratio is equal in both the direction so the capacity of section will increase because the capacity of section in case of compression member mainly depend on the slenderness ratio so if we have a slenderness ratio high slenderness ratio about one axis but a very less slenderness ratio about the other axis so the member will bend about the higher slenderness ratio value or about the axis which have higher slenderness ratio mean about the weaker axis so we need to strengthen both of the axis or we need to make such a section or such a column which is strong in both the direction are equally strong in both the direction so build up sections are economical as far as the material cost is concerned however the joining and labor cost is generally high but this the total cost of section may become less for a greater length if the length of member is large so in that case the built up section can be a good choice it can be a economical choice so the joining of various element of a built up section is usually performed by using lacing so we can make box section by using these angles we can make a box section using channel section so channel section can be combined in this way we can combine plates as well as angle section to make i section or w section so here is the w section with cover plates we have cover plates to strengthen the flanges so different possibilities are there to make the built up section so depending upon the requirement in which direction or about which axis you want to strengthen the section we can decide the shape as well as the type of different members that need to be joined to make the built up section 